Hello everyone, this is Christy with MyScrapbookEvolution.com and it's time for the Plain Box Society Artist Collaboration. This collaboration is hosted by Tina Walker and Stencil Girl Products. I am not affiliated or compensated by Stencil Girl to participate. I'm doing this on my own for fun with supplies from my own stash. Each of the artists received the same box. We all started from the same place, but we each ended up with a very unique design. I'll be sharing a link to the blog post where you can hop around and see what the rest of the artists created. But meanwhile, let's take a look at how I created my box. So all of the artists in the collaboration received this box. It's the same shape and size for everyone. And I knew I wanted to make a trinket box, so I chose to flatten it and cut away the portions of the lid that I didn't want to use. And then I'm folding it back up. I also have cardboard and I have a water bottle which I will be using to create the box shape. Now by itself just sitting on top of the box that lid might have come undone and just fallen away. So I've chosen to cut out some pieces of cardboard. I'm going to use those to reinforce the box and then I am going to just add those to that original box lid so that they will fit kind of snugly back into that original box shape. And of course, most of the artists don't have a cat to help them like I did, that's Pixie. She's often in my studio. And I had to just kind of move her away while I was cutting so that she didn't get hurt. But she does like to investigate everything I do. Now with the water bottle, you'll wanna ensure that you rinse it out. I used a very mild, plant, eco-friendly based dish soap and then I try to dry it out as best I can. I will then cut that down to the size that I wanted and dry it out a little bit with a paper towel because sometimes it's still a little bit damp. I'm using glossy accents to adhere it to the box lid. You could also use um, hot glue or whatever glue that you have on hand. You just want something that's going to make a good seal around that lid and the cardboard itself. I'm using a very basic mixture for the paper mache. It's uh, water mixed with a little bit of flour and then I'm just using some paper that's left over from some shipments that I received full of craft supplies. The paper mache not only covers up the water bottle on the lid, it's also used on that bottom portion of the box and it gives the box a little bit of reinforcement so that it's hard and it's not going to collapse as easily when you're using it as a trinket box. You'll need to do the paper mache in layers. Let it dry a little bit and then come back in and add in another layer. Just take a little bit of time and patience and that way you can get everything smoothed down without any bubbles and looking in the manner that you want it to look. And of course the hardest part about the paper mache is waiting for it to dry. It dried over the course of several days and it took me probably about a week, week and a half to get the paper mache just the way that I wanted it. Once it was dry I added a base coat of acrylic paint kind of in this teal greenish blue color and then once that was dry, I chose this stencil. It comes originally from the Stencil Girl Stencil Club. I was a member many years ago when they first started it. And what I'm doing here is just outlining portions of that stencil onto the bottom part of the box. I didn't really worry about whether or not the design was continuous in that it didn't wrap around the box. Each panel will be slightly different. And you'll see why it doesn't matter that I wrapped it around the box or not when I come to the finishing point at the end. Now I did use a waterproof marker to outline the stencil. Just a very fine tip one in black. And now I'm going to add a base coat of white gesso to the portion of the stencil design that I want to add color to. I'm not really worried about whether or not the black outline remains. If I paint over it a little bit, that's okay, because when I come back in to finish the box, I can add that outline back again. 
Once the gesso had dried, I decided to come back in using this fine tip paint pen filled with white ink. I was hoping for kind of a dried, glossy, raised kind of design because sometimes ink will dry slightly raised. It worked fine when I kept just the sides of the box because I could leave the box to dry for a little bit and it would dry flat without the ink running. I did run into a little problem when I tried using the ink on the lid of the box because it's curved and the ink just kind of went where it wanted to. I ended up having to to adjust the original design that I had planned for the trinket box and that's okay. It ended up being creative and it, it worked, but you may want to stick with acrylic paint for curved surfaces. Once the ink had dried completely, I just came back in with that same waterproof black pen and I outlined the stencil design. I still wanted just a little bit more to the design itself so I came back in with Posca paint pens and markers and added just a little bit more to the overall design of the box. I limited the color palette though to just three marker colors. I knew that I wanted a gold trimmed edge around the corners and edges of the box. So I used a little bit of masking tape to tape off and protect the design that I wanted to keep open. Came in with a little bit of white gesso to provide the first base coat. And then afterwards I came in with gold acrylic paint and layered that over the gesso to get the gold edging. And here of course, once again, is that completed trinket box that we saw at the beginning. It took me about a week and a half, two weeks to make it, mostly just because of drying time. The box can be used to put a gift in, like a gift card, chocolates, jewelry. You could use it as home decor or to store items that you have around the house, something small and tiny and special. Don't forget to check out what everyone else made for their altered boxes for the Plain Box Society artist collaboration. I'll have the link to that blog post with all of the blogs and social media so that you can hop around and see what everybody made.